New York is the best and everyone else can just get out of here. <laughs> so next we want to recognize outstanding achievement in New York City book writing and fiction. And I, I'm a huge reader. Like I, I don't even get upset if there's a subway delay because for me that's just more reading time. And I will be honest that I have missed my stop going home a few times. I've been reading and I've looked up, and uh, let me tell you that Coney Island at 3 a.m. is a very different place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, you may be wondering why Kevin is not out here to present this award with me, uh, but that's because the last book that he read was The Cat in the Hat, so I told him that I would handle this one. <laughs> so I'm here to present tonight's award for outstanding achievement in New York City book writing and fiction. She is the author of some amazing gaslight and steampunk style novels, very cool including Magic Most Foul and the Eternophiles. Please put your hands together for Ms. Leanna Renee Heber. Where someone else might see bricks and mortar, a novelist sees a story. Where someone else might see massive crowds, a novelist sees cast of characters. Try to get inside the theme, the plot, the mystery of the Big Apple, and you might never come out again, I well know. <laughs> Better to simply lose yourself in the drama of this city's inspiration. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City book writing are City on Fire, a novel by Garth Riz Culver. <laughs> on Amsterdam Avenue, a Gaslight Mystery by Victoria Thompson. <laughs> Run You Down, a novel by Julia Dahl. <laughs> and 13 Ways of Looking, Fiction by Colin McCann. <laughs> and the Gannick Apple Award goes to Garth I will be happy as a fellow New York City novelist to accept this honor <laughs> for uh, Mr. Albert. And, uh, and we love this city and we love writing about it. So, to all of New York City's stories, thank you. umbrage at what Olivia said when I was off stage, okay? I don't know what umbrage means, but she said go out and say I took umbrage at it. I've, uh, 2016, I said I would read more books, and I've already read four, okay? I finished The Cat in the Hat, Harold the Purple Cram, and I'm halfway through Good Night Moon right now. It is, uh, incredible, okay? I want to get into the Bearskin Bears, Bears, but I don't want to do, like, a whole series, you know, then you're committed to, like, 75 books. I just jokes on uh, We want to recognize outstanding achievement in NYC uh, book writing nonfiction. So we have the author of Style and Grace, African Americans at Home, and Harlem Lost and Found. Please put your hands together for Mr. Michael Henry Adams. creativity that we all use to reinvent ourselves when we come here. It is in fact that steely grit and gravitas of reality. 
that I think is the foremost, the utmost New York City value that we admire so much. And uh, it's no mistake, it's no surprise that the term uh, keeping it real originated here in New York. <laughs> nor, is it, nor is it a surprise to learn that in the underground drag ball scene in New York, that there's a category, Butch Queen Realness. Yes. So um, let's keep it real and let us acknowledge those books which we find so invaluable in documenting the legacy of New York because of their grit and gravitas. And the um, nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Book Writing Nonfiction are The Algonquin Roundtable, New York, A Historical Guide, and The Warners, Brooklyn's Curious Canal by Joseph. Interior Landmarks, Treasures of New York City by Jake and Larry Letterman. Saving Place, 50 Years of New York City Landmarks by Jake Albert, Andrew Goldfrey, and Ian Fan. And the winner is. who are constantly talking about preservation because this book and the exhibit were all about celebrating preservation in New York, which I, is something that, that tour guides do every day. So thanks to you and Doug.
was not able to be here, so we were accepting an award for her. So congratulations. Chief Tour Guide of Kristen's Tours and a Brooklyn Experience, please welcome Ms. Kristen Singleton. inspired so many brilliant people to make it their home. I'm a native, but welcome to all of you. <laughs> and to create institutions that touch our hearts and become central to our fondest memories and to those of everyone from Texas and Tennessee and Oklahoma and <laughs> South. But even the greatest New Yorkers that find that their time here is short. And even the greatest institutions can fall victim to the wrecking ball and the development plan. On this night, we, when we celebrate our city's best and our brightest, we take time to pause and remember the deeply loved people and the places that we've lost in the past year. When we look at the news and shed our tears, we say, oh, what a terrible year this was. But then we remember that this happens every year. But those who are no longer with us are commemorated because the joy and the warmth that they gave us will always outlast the sadness of their loss. As we say goodbye, we ask that we hold your applause until the end of the memorial, out of respect to those who were, were known maybe in a smaller circle than others. But let's give them equal love and remember that they each played a part within our city, within our industry, and within our community.
so many incredible people and institutions we lost them, that, that this year. That was just very emotional. That so thanks good. for putting that together. Yeah. Everyone again. And for recognizing some of the places are as important as some of those people and the people that ran them. So that was really incredible. Yeah, Thank beautiful. you. We're so lucky to have been in their presence or been to those places. We're really lucky. Wow. Um, we, in honor of, uh, of New York City's incredible food, mm -hmm. uh, we actually, Olivia and I were, had an argument back in the dressing room. Basically, it's what's the best New York City food. What is the best? And, well. Okay, see, I say bagels and pizza. Kevin I says, I, uh, a little unorthodox. I'm a halal cart guy, and, uh, and I like a good knish, okay? So... <laughs> So we figured, why why should we tell you what is the best? Why don't we let you guys settle it? Yeah, so okay. we're gonna do like a kind of a bracket. We have a bracket. Obviously, the number one seeds are pizza and bagels, so they're not gonna be. This is the final four. We broke yeah. it down to the final four. So the very first. The first two, and we're gonna do this just you know by applause and by cheers. So the first two. We we have to calibrate the applause first, because the first one you guys got to be ready. Okay, so let's have a regular applause right okay. now. Okay. Perfect. You're calibrated. You know what to what you want to give. You don't want to later be like, man, I should have clapped louder. Are you ready? Yeah, don't be ashamed. Don't okay. just go for it. All right, so in, in don't clap yet, okay? Each one's gonna get its own clapping time. So in our first pairing, we have pizza and we have halal carts, okay? So if you think that the best food in New York is like some kind of falafel wrap or a lamb shawarma from a halal cart, sauce, make some noise. Sauce. Halal carts. <laughs> if you think the best New York food is pizza, make some noise. like Duke versus Seton Hall if you're into basketball. But Seton Hall got in, you know? That's the, that's the important part. Our next lineup, our next matchup, it's the Jewish showdown of the century, ladies and gentlemen. Bagels versus Knishes. Ooh, that's tough. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Bagels. For that potato we treat we all know and love. Canishes! Big Kanish man down here. I think it's as we expected. Oh, yeah. That so was, was North pizza. Carolina versus Western Virginia University. Yeah. <laughs> Sports reference. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it was clearly, clearly pizza, pizza and, bagels and bagels. Okay, so we're gonna do those two right now. If the best New York food this is. This one's tough. This is It's really hard. Really hard. Did you guys, did, have you made your decision? Or in your head, you're like, what am I gonna do? Once for the morning, once for the night. <laughs> oh, we'll see. I, I don't draw a distinction between the two, but you do. Yeah. Okay, so if you think that pizza is the best, make some noise. <laughs> all right, and if for you, if you, it's all about. If, let me just say, I, no, I'm not, I'm not, okay, I'm not, I'm not. Bagels. <laughs> in a okay. surprise win, wow. the winner of best food in New York City is alcohol. Oh, who saw it coming? Who saw it coming? Ladies and gentlemen. Our next award is for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Food. And introducing the nominees is the fourth generation owner of the culinary institution, Russ and Daughters. Oh, yes. yes. If you haven't been there, you have to go. The law with her cousin has brought it into the 21st century with the new Russ and Daughters Cafe, Russ and Daughters at the Jewish Museum, and Russ and Daughters Bagel and Bakery. The great granddaughter of Russ himself Ms. Nikki Russ Fetterman. Welcome, 
Do you have an opinion in the matter? Hey, do you want to weigh in? I think you all know where I stand. <laughs> we didn't want to start any controversy. <laughs> They're thinking about taste and texture, not about history. They're thinking about lunch and dinner, not cultural legacy. <laughs> they are thinking about nutrition and nourishment, not bright, sparkly, glamorous awards. And yet here we are, singing the praises of our culinary colleagues, getting ready to hand them a trophy. Because whether we planned it that way or not, the fact is that any establishment that provides truly great food becomes a cultural institution. And every one of tonight's nominees has history, tradition, passion, devotion, science and art working in their favor. Food is where we all meet. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Food are for 90 years on Bot and Grand, DePalos. For his hospitality included program started in November 2015, Danny Miner. For bringing the quality food scene back to Harlem, starting with Red Rooster, Marcus Samuels. Five years of service, Jonas Schindler. Okay, these are all delicious nominees. Uh, and the Gannett Apple Award goes to Jonas Schindler. that came to the United States. <laughs> and um, he put this love into the knishes. And here we are today. <laughs> and we are planning to be here for a hundred more. <laughs> making sure that we're here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, to Mr. and Mrs. Zoo. 